So what are the four roles and how do we get students to both internalize them and then accept them and use them in their own uh, group work? The four roles are the facilitator, the timekeeper, the recorder, and the presenter. So informally, the facilitator is the group leader. It's the person who's accountable for keeping all of the people in the group on task, but also ensuring that everyone in the group has a voice. Now again, I scaffold all these things. So I'll say to students uh, as time goes on, or I'll present in a video, this is the role of the facilitator, to make sure that everyone in the group has time at the beginning, to be paying attention and communicating with the timekeeper, to say, all right, that was a minute for the first person, thanks, thanks for your thoughts, let's move on to the next person, and then ask and or demand that person participates in the group activity. And as time moves on to say, all right, good, from the facilitator, I'm sorry, from the timekeeper, we learn that it's time for the individual con contribution part to stop and we're going to move on to the consensus period. And then to turn that into a product by speaking to the recorder. So the recorder's role is to take the board and respond through writing to all the thoughts that are coming in from the group. This can be done a variety of ways. We can start by writing out individual thoughts at the beginning and then say, all right, good, let's, let's look at these and as the conversation continues and consensus is acquired, to erase out and then write one large response that holds the group's overall opinion at the end. And to adorn with uh, illustrations or whatever as necessary. Now again, this isn't a high art sort of thing. Anyone should be able to participate in this as long as the person's able to write physically. The presenter is an interesting and nuanced role. That's really the voice of the group. So instead of being the leader of the group, that's the person to whom we as the instructors or other people in the group will communicate when that group's opinion is being stated. And so to help facilitate this, when I go up to a group, it's very tempting to sit down in front of the recorder, because the recorder has the board in her or his lap, and say, all right, what does your group think? That's not the person to speak to, though. So instead, I'll sit down in front of the group and say, first, who's your presenter? And that person will identify her or himself. And then I'll say, great, you tell me now. I look away from the person who has the board. You tell me what the group is thinking about this. Even if we're still in the middle of the task, I still speak to that person. That is the voice of the group for all intents and purposes. The timekeeper has both a straightforward and a little bit of a complicated sort of role. The timekeeper has to keep an eye on the time whether it's presented up in front of the room or that person has a timepiece of some sort, and to inform people in the group, particularly the facilitator, this is how much time we have, hey, we're a minute through the individual contribution thing, it's time to move on, and then the facilitator affects that change. So the facilitator probably can't both facilitate all the processes in the group and make sure that individuals are contributing and make sure that people are listening and are staying on task and keep an eye on the time. That's the role of the timekeeper. At the end of the period, the timekeeper informs the facilitator that, hey, we have to focus back to the front of the classroom, and then the facilitator communicates that to the rest of the group, and we move back to the front of the room. Now, this is a lot of information, but conveying it just like this in a video is fairly useful. Students can take that, and they can watch it and say, really, if I'm the presenter today, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I'm just responsible for, for speaking out for the group. Okay, I'm the recorder. What is my responsibility? So scaffolding that way is very beneficial. But this buy-in and internalization sort of thing, the participation side of things, when I ask students to assign themselves to their own roles, before we get started on our task, I'll say, all right, great. Groups, please pay attention. Facilitators, please raise your hands. And they all do. And if I see a group that doesn't have one, they're still going, well, we don't really know who the group leader is today. I'll ask them to assign one and move on. And if necessary, I'll go up and intervene in that sort of process. And I go that, through that for each of the roles just to make sure everyone has explicitly said, yes, that is my role. I've internalized that for today. That's the responsibility that I'm taking on. So both understanding on the one hand and active participation in an acknowledgement of the, the responsibilities associated with the role should really help out in this issue.